Okay, day 13 of 21 days. When to buy. Now this is a, a big sticking point for a lot of people. They're thinking about the market cycle. The media's talking a lot about market crashes and people get stuck and they wait and they wait and they wait and they don't end up buying properties. So what, what what's going on? What What is impacting the psychology of people that are thinking about buying their first home or investment property? And, 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 and so what are the outside factors? Well, there's a lot of property experts. Uh, property, especially in New Zealand, is a hot topic every single day of the week. You got economists, accountants, agents, every man and his dog, Uber driver, your uncles, all the media, like everyone is a property expert, everybody has an opinion. What's the problem with that? Well, their opinion is based on very small amount of data and doesn't matter what people are thinking about in terms of seasons, market clock or cycles, everybody is talking and focusing on averages. Now, when you're buying a property, you're not buying the average property in Auckland. You're not buying the average property in, in Gore. You're buying a single specific property in the suburb that you've researched and you understand. So all of these people that are market commentators, just you can discount most of what they say because they're just generalists and they're often politically focused. They've got a lot of their own bias, either positive or negative. They've got a history of their own experiences that have clouded their own judgment. They don't know. Only you can make those decisions about investing. You've got to get confidence and clarity to make decisions for yourself. And don't get caught up looking at the whole big macro picture of New Zealand with all this different information that's not being well assessed individually. You want to start thinking about individual suburb areas, about schools, and you want to start thinking about, okay, suburb indicators. What are the things that are important for this suburb about transport, infrastructure, schools? What are the fundamentals? Uh, return on cash invested, opportunities. Is there future potential through uh, development? Now, if the average uh, property value is $1 million, but you're looking at development properties only, where there's room to put three properties where there's only one now, like you can just forget all of these averages. Like this economist in Wellington has no idea about a development property in Glen Innes. So when this person is quoted about the New Zealand property market, it's got nothing to do with what you're looking to do in that individual suburb on that individual project. And especially because the property market commentators are not thinking about finance. They're not thinking about um, your financial future. They're just generalizing. So. When you're buying an investment property or first home, whether you think it's the right time or not, you're thinking about downside protection. How can I make sure that this doesn't blow up in my face? Well, you don't want to overpay, so the price has to be right. You want to buy in the right location for what your goals are. You want to make sure the type of property you buy is, is best fit for you, and that um, if anything happens, you don't lose 20, 30% value the next day. You want to understand the history of property values in New Zealand, that the trend line is up and down, but it's up for the long term. So if you go back long enough and you have a long enough time series, the property prices in New Zealand have always been up, even if there's a little blip along the way. And you have to remember that if you buy before a period of big inflation like we're looking to go through now, then the inflation is gonna erode away the debt and build up your proportion of equity. So even if you feel like the market's gonna drop 10% in the next 12 months, but the inflation for the next five years is gonna average 8%, it's better to get in early, get the capital gains and the compounding starting early, whether the volatility, because if it goes down by 10% in value while you own it, it doesn't matter unless you're looking to sell. So if you buy today and you're holding for five to 10 years and your value on paper goes down, it doesn't matter. You're still building up capital gains in the long term. And if you have to buy and sell, you can buy and sell in the same market. So where people do get caught out is when they sell and they wait too long, market changes, finance options change, and they can't get back into the market and they can miss out. So buying and selling or selling and buying in the same markets with a short period of time takes a bit of jigging with an advisor or banker, but it's, it's, it's doable. Now I've talked to thousands, literally thousands of potential investors and actual investors about their property and mortgage options in the last six, seven years. 
I've heard it all before. There's a lot of people always say, I'm gonna wait for the crash, I'm gonna wait for the crash. People have been saying that for years and years and years. And even if there's a crash tomorrow, like what are you waiting for? Don't miss the opportunity for inflation to erode your debt and for the capital gains to, to set in. You gotta start compounding as soon as you possibly can. So if you can buy a property and you're not, then why not? Uh, don't listen to these people that talk about the averages just make sure you find the right deal and if you can't find the right deal it means you haven't done enough research to get uh, confidence or you you haven't focused enough to find the right property so you got to do the work any questions about when to buy or understanding market cycles happy to answer in the comments below uh, but don't get too distracted or uh, don't be too patient is what I'm saying. You want to be long-term focused, but if you can buy, and you've got to ask yourself why you're not already.